In 1740, Andrew Gordon and Benjamin Franklin invented the first electric motor and that was electrostatic. The first electric motors were simple electrostatic devices and these experimental motors worked by electrostatic force. And the working principle of these motor was depending on Coulomb's law. There are two main types of motors. First one is DC motors and second one is AC motors. The AC motors are further classified as single phase induction motor, three phase induction motor and synchronous motor. Similarly, in DC motors, there are further subtypes like DC series motor, DC own motor, shunt motor, and compound motor. A DC motor is an electrical machine that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. In a DC motor, the input electrical energy is a direct current which is transformed into mechanical rotation. And in this video, let's know about the DC motor. Without further ado, let's get started. What's in it for you are, first we will see what is DC motor, next the DC motor diagram, after which we will see the different parts of DC motor and once this is done we will move on to DC motor working and next up the types of DC motor in that we will see the self excited DC motor and separately excited DC motor and next the difference between brush DC motor and brushless DC motor and finally we will end the session by looking after the applications of DC motor first what is motor the motor is an electric device that transforms the electric power into mechanical power the working of these motors depends on the interaction of the field at the stator with the flux generated by the current armature windings at the rotor. The input to the motor can be provided according to their types. If they are DC motor then the input will be provided with a battery and rectifiers. If the motor is AC then the input will come from AC power source or inverter, an AC generator or induction generator or a synchronous generator. Less rating motors used in industries or in our homes is for converting the mechanical power into electrical power. While high rating motors, almost 100 MW is used in shipping propulsion and in pump storage applications. Some motors are installed in different fans, pumping devices, drill machines or some other devices like electric watches. Now let's see what is DC motor. A DC motor is defined as a class of electrical motors that convert direct current electrical energy into mechanical energy. So a DC motor is an electrical machine that converts the electrical energy into mechanical energy. In DC motor, the input electrical energy is a direct current which is transformed into mechanical rotation. A current carrying conductor experiences a torque when it is placed in the magnetic field, also it tends to move. Therefore, it can be concluded that mechanical force is produced when magnetic field and electric field interacts. And this principle is known as motor action on which the DC motor works. So from the above definition, we can conclude that any electric motor that is operated using direct current is called DC motor. Next, we will understand the DC motor construction. The essential part of DC motor is armature as well as stator. The armature coil is the rotating part, whereas the stationary part is stator. In this, the armature coil is connected towards the DC supply, which includes the brushes as well as the commutators. The main function of the commutator is to convert the AC to DC, which is induced in the armature. The flow of current can be supplied by using the brush from the motor's rotary part toward the inactive outside load. The arrangements of armature can be done in between the two poles of electromagnet. To understand the DC motor in details, let us consider the diagram on right. The circle in the center represents the direct current motor. On the circle, we draw the brushes. On brushes, we connect the external terminals through which we give the supply voltage. On the mechanical terminal, we have a shaft coming out from the center of the armature and the shaft couples to the mechanical load. On supply terminal, we represent the armature resistance RA in series. The input voltage E is applied across the brushes. The electric current which flows through the rotor armature via brushes in presence of magnetic field produces the torque Tg. Due to this torque Tg, the TC motor armature rotates. As the armature conductors are carrying currents and the armature rotates inside the stator magnetic field, it also produces an EMF EB in a manner very similar to that of generator. Now let's see the different parts of TC motor. The different parts of DC motor includes armature or rotor, field coil or stator, bearings of motor, commutators, brushes, yoke and poles. The rotor is the rotating part of a machine. The rotor is a moving component of an electromagnetic system in an electric motor, electric generator or alternator. And its rotation is due to the interaction between the windings and the magnetic field which produces a torque around the rotor's axis. In motors and generators, the armature is the rotor and field is the stator. From the figure you can see the armature of a DC motor is a cylinder of magnetic laminations that are insulated from one another. That is the armature is perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder. The armature is a rotating part which rotates on its axis and it is separated from the field coil by an air gap. So we can say the armature or the rotor is the dynamic part of the motor that is used to create the mechanical revolutions of the unit. Field coil or stator. The stator is a stationary component found in electric motors and generators. 
It consists of a laminated core and coils of insulated wires known as windings. When alternating current is applied to the stator, it creates a rotating magnetic field. It is the static part of the motor which provides protection to the internal structure of the motor. And thus we can say in DC motor, the stator provides the rotating magnetic field that drives the armature to rotate. Next, the bearings of motor. The ball or roller bearings are fitted in the end housings. The housing of the motor gives support to the brushes, the bearings and the iron core. The rotor is sustained by the bearings that permit the rotor to move on its axis. The bearings are mounted on the shaft of the motor to provide less friction during its rotation. Next, the commutator. It is a split ring that is designed with copper segments. Commutators are the most important part of DC motor that is used to transform AC into DC. The function served by commutator is to convert the induced AC in conductors into DC output. So the process of reversing current is known as commutation. Brushes are the very important part of the motor. These brushes transfer electric current to the armature to the physical contact with the commutator. As soon as the armature coil gets energy or power, it begins to behave like a magnet. So the brushes using the commutator mainly work as a bridge to fix the stationary electric circuit toward the rotor. So we can understand that the commutator and the brush unit are concerned with transmitting the power from the static electric circuit to the mechanical rotating region or the rotor. Next, yoke and poles. The outer frame of a DC machine is called as a yoke. It is made up of cast iron or steel. It not only provides the mechanical strength to the whole assembly but also carries the magnetic flux produced by the field winding. A pole of a DC machine is a supporting structure to electromagnet. The field winding is wound over the poles. Poles produce the magnetic flux when the field winding is excited by DC supply voltage. The pole shoe is an extended part or a shower like structure of a pole. The two main parts of poles are pole core and pole shoes. And these essential parts are connected together through hydraulic force and are connected to the yoke. And so far we have discussed the various components of DC motor. Now let's understand the working of DC motor. A DC motor is an electrical machine which converts the electrical energy into mechanical energy. When a current carrying conductor is placed in the magnetic field, it experiences a torque and has a tendency to move. That is whenever the current carrying conductor is placed in the magnetic field, it experiences a mechanical force. In other words, when a magnetic field and an electric field interact, a mechanical force is produced. And the DC motor works on this principle, which is known as motoring action. Fleming's left hand rule and its magnitude decides the direction of this force. Fleming's left hand rule gives the direction of rotation of the motor. The Fleming's left hand rule states that if the index finger, middle finger and thumb of your left hand is equally perpendicular to each other, the index finger represents the direction of magnetic field, the middle finger indicates the direction of current, and the thumb represents the direction in which the force is experienced by the shaft of the DC motor. And it is given by F equals BIL Newtons, where B is magnetic flux density, I is current, and L is the length of the conductor within the magnetic field. Structurally and construction wise, the DC motor is exactly similar to DC generator, but electrically it is just opposite. And here we supply the electrical energy to the input port and derive the mechanical energy from the output port. And in this diagram you can see the supply voltage E and the current I is given to the electrical port or the input port. And we derive the mechanical output that is torque T and speed omega from the mechanical port or output port. And the parameter K relates the input and output port variables of the direct current motor. There is T equals KI and E equals K omega. And we can understand that the motor is just opposite phenomena of DC generator. And we can derive both motoring and generating operation from the same machine by simply reversing the ports. Talking about the working of the DC motor. When the DC motor field coil is energized, a magnetic field is created in the air gap. The magnetic field that is created is in the direction of the radius of the armature. The magnetic field enters the armature from the side of the north pole of the field coil and exits from the south pole side. The conductors placed on the other pole get subjected to the force of the same intensity in the opposite direction. So these two opposing forces will create a torque that causes the motor armature to rotate. And next the types of DC motor. DC motors have a wide range of applications ranging from electric shavers to automobiles. Now let us discuss the various types of DC motor in detail. The DC motors are classified into different types based on the field winding connections to the armature as self excited DC motor and separately excited DC motor. Then what is excitation? The magnetic flux in the DC machine is produced by the field coils that carry current. That is the circulating current in the field winding produces a magnetic flux and the phenomenon is known as excitation. So excitation means passing current in the field winding of DC motor to generate magnetic flux in it. And the field winding is also known as exciting coil or winding. According to the methods of their field excitation, the DC motors are classified as self-excited DC motors and separately excited DC motors. 
first we will see self excited dc motor in self excited dc motors the field winding is connected either in series or parallel to the armature winding and the self excited dc motor can be further classified into shunt wound dc motor series wound dc motor and compound wound dc motor in shunt wound dc motor the field winding is parallel to armature and this parallel circuit is also known as shunt circuit so the term shunt motor is used let's see the current voltage and power equation for shunt motors first we will see the current equation by applying kirchhoff's current law at junction a in the above figure the sum of incoming currents at a is equal to the sum of outgoing currents at a that is i equals ia plus ish where i is input line current ia is armature current ish is shunt field current the equation is the current equation and next the voltage equation the input voltage provided to the motor armature performs the two task first it controls the induced back emf of the motor next it provides supply to the ohmic ia or a drop using kirchhoff's voltage law we write the voltage equation for field winding circuit that is v equals ish into rsh where v is supply voltage ish is shunt current and rsh is shunt resistance this is the voltage across shunt winding that is the voltage equation of dc motor for armature winding circuit the equation will be v equals e plus ia into ra here e is induced emf in armature called back emf and we know that ia is armature current and ra is armature resistance and this is voltage drop across armature of the motor so the power equation is given as power input equals mechanical power developed plus losses in the armature plus losses in the field so the power input is v and i and the mechanical power developed is denoted by pm and the losses in the armature is ia square into ra and the losses in the field is ish square into rsh on simplifying this we get the mechanical power pm equals e into ia and this is the mechanical power developed in armature now multiply the equation 3 by ia and if we multiply the equation with ia through that we get VIA equals EIA plus IA square RA, and we know that the mechanical power PM equals EIA. So we replace EIA as PM, and this is said to be the power equation of DC motor, where VIA is the armature input, that is the electrical power supplied to armature. EIA is the armature output. IA RA is the electric power wasted in armature. Out of armature input, a small portion, about five percent, is wasted as IA square RA. And the remaining amount EIA is changed into mechanical power within the armature. Next, the series wound DC motor. In the series motor, the field winding is connected in series with the armature winding. Now let's see the voltage and current equation of series DC motor. The electrical layout of the typical series wound DC motor is given here. The series field current is given as I equals ISE, which is also equal to IA. On applying Kirchhoff's current law, we get this, where I is the input line current, ISE is the series field current. and ia is armature current and next the voltage equation is obtained by applying kirchhoff's voltage law that is v equals e plus i into ra plus rse where v is supply voltage e is back emf and i is current and rse is series field winding resistance ra is armature resistance and this is the basic voltage equation of a series wound motor next the power equation is obtained by multiplying the equation 8 by i we know that mechanical power developed pm is equal to ei so replace the value in the equation through that we get the equation number 10 on comparing the equation 9 and 10 we will get the equation shown here that is pm equals ei and next the compound wound dc motor a dc motor having both shunt and series field winding is called as a compound motor so in this type we have two field windings one is connected in series and another is connected in parallel with the armature windings The compound DC motor is further divided into cumulative compound motor and differential compound motor. In a cumulative compound motor, the magnetic flux produced by both the windings is in the same direction. That is phi R equals phi S H plus phi S E. Whereas in differential compound motor, the flux produced by the series field winding is opposite to the flux produced by the shunt field winding. That is phi R equals phi S H minus phi S E. The positive and negative sign indicates the direction of flux produced in the field windings. and next the separately excited dc motor in this type the coil is energized by a separate or external dc source here ia is equal to il where ia is armature current and il is line current and the terminal voltage is given by v equals eg minus ia into ra and if the contact brush drop is known then the equation 1 can be written as 
V equals Eg minus Ia into Ra minus 2 Vb. And the power developed is given by Eg into Ia. And the power output is Vil is equal to Via. Here V is terminal voltage. Ia and Ra are armature resistance drop. And Vb is brush contact drop. And next we will understand the brushed DC motor and brushless DC motor. First brushed DC motor. A brushed DC motor features a commutator that reverses the current every half cycle and creates a single direction torque. A brushed DC motor is an internally commutated electric motor which is designed to run from DC power supply and it utilizes an electric brush for contact. A brushed DC motor has a permanent magnet inside its outer body with the rotating armature inside. The permanent magnets are stationary and are called a stator and the rotating armature contains an electromagnet and it is called as rotor. In brushed DC motor, the rotor spins 180 degrees when an electric current is applied to the armature. In order to travel beyond the initial 180 degrees, the poles of the magnet must flip. The carbon brushes contact the stator so the rotor spins. Flipping the magnetic field will enable the rotor to spin 360 degree. Next, the brushless DC motor. A brushless DC motor is also known as synchronous DC motor. Like brushed motor, a brushless motor works by altering the polarity of windings inside the motor. It is essentially an inside out brushed motor which eliminates the need for brushes. In brushless DC motor, the permanent magnets are fitted to the rotor with the electromagnets on the stator. An electronic speed controller regulates or commutates the charge to electromagnets in the stator to enable the rotor to travel through 360 degree. The commutator in the brushless DC motor is replaced by an electronic servo mechanism that can detect and adjust the angle of rotor. Now let's see the applications and characteristics of DC motor. Shunt motors are normally constant speed. The starting torque of this motor is medium which is limited to nearly 200% of commutation. So the speed control of the shunt motor is done by decreasing the armature voltage control. The shunt motors are normally used for constant speed applications like lathe machines, fans and blowers, woodworking machines, printing machines and centrifugal pumps. The series DC motor got variable speed and the starting torque of this DC motor is quite high. Normally it can high up to 500%. The speed regulation is widely variable at no load. The DC series motor speed control is done using the series resistant method. These motors are suitable for the applications which require high starting torque and variable speed. And the applications includes electrical cranes, trolley cars and electric locomotives. Next the cumulative compound DC motor. Normally this type of DC motor is good for adjustable varying speed. The speed regulation can vary from 25% to 30%. The starting torque of this motor is also high like DC series motor and it is used in shears, heavy planers, rolling mills and elevators. And next the differential compound DC motor. The torque and speed of this motor is almost constant and we know that in this motor we have two fluxes oppose each other. The resultant flux decreases as the load increases so the machine will run at the higher speed with the increase in load. So this property is more dangerous on full load. Thus the motor will try to run with dangerously high speed. And these motors are not suitable for any practical applications. And next we have separately excited DC motor. It is often used as actuators in trains and automotive traction applications. Next the brushless DC motor. It is used in electrical vehicles, pumps, laboratory equipments, fuel controls and many more. And finally we have brushed DC motor. It is often used in cranes, paper machines, steel rolling mills and so on. So with this we have come to the end of the session. Thank you so much for watching.